Hello, welcome to Design Time. I'm Jackie Lacey. Today we thought we'd spend a little time talking about better photography and the way that you can utilize photography to increase your profits by increasing your likes on social when you're posting as well as also preparing a little better photograph for merchandising and marketing. One of the things that is incredibly important is lighting. As you can see, they've got lots of lights on me, so they make me look as pale as they possibly can. It's very important to make sure that you use lighting that doesn't what we call fire up the design, especially when you're dealing with white, because white does not pixelate very well. It doesn't pick up. The camera can't really form, especially when it's white, on white, like a white background. You want to be very cautious that you have the lights too intense. What is really best is to take the lighting and reflect it off of something else so that it illuminates as opposed to really what burning the light. Again, especially when you're talking about lighter colors like white. So you want to make sure that you've really looked at um, how you're going to light the spot where you're going to take a photograph. And I recommend that you take photographs of pretty much everything that you do because you don't want to have a missed opportunity. A lot of times people will call up and say, I saw something so-and-so, so in a different place that you had done, and you might not remember the recipe exactly, but if you can utilize a photograph to go back and refresh your memory, then you can uh, fulfill that order again. As well as you want to use your recipe, recipes for those times when you might need a little inspiration. A lot of times I'm really tired after a long week. We're just coming off of Valentine's ourselves this week. So you might be a little tired and maybe everything's not clicking as much as you would like for it to up here. So you need a little inspiration. And I'll look back at my recipes and photographs to just get myself going in the morning sometimes. So getting back to photography, as you begin to look at some of the designs, and I did some very specific things up here. When you're looking at something that's tight, and clustered such as this it's a lot easier to really capture the essence of the bouquet we can see that it's bound with some red aluminum wire we've got some beautiful uh, red aluminum and bullion that where we've made sort of an entry piece in the water so you would think that this is just fine there shouldn't be any issues what i want to draw attention attention to is how easy it is to see that water line when you're shooting against clear glass, you want to make sure that you fill the vase completely so that it should look very clear, very clean. If you are touching the glass a lot when you're setting it in place, that's likely to show up in the photograph. People are gonna notice that, and it also may look a little blurred. If you're going to use something on the inside of the glass, remember that water magnifies. So you want to make sure that you utilize it everywhere inside so that it's going to be magnified at the same rate and it's going to look like it does cover truly the inside. Now this one we designed a little bit of a pitch forward only because when you're going to photograph it, you're going to want to see the body of the flowers, that beautiful design curve. It's not really designed that way. It's designed as a round bouquet, but we've pitched it over into the corner so that it brings all of your f the face of your flowers forward. That way you can clearly see how beautiful the bouquet is. It's round, it's dome shaped. We've got a bit of texturizing going on with the various flowers. So that's enough about round. This one is really a lot easier to shoot, except you probably will notice red is one of the most difficult colors to photograph because it is so hot. It is so bright and vibrant. So you're going to, again, adjust your lighting, adjust your camera, or you might adjust it after you've taken a photograph. Because if you've got a smartphone, I say mine's only relatively intelligent. But if you've got a smartphone, you can do all of that after you take the photograph. When we start to look at those things that are very compact or might possibly have some uh, design aspects like this with the foliage sort of pitching forward that's bringing our eye back into the center of the bouquet, we can see all of this area right in here because we've got some things that are tucked down low. It's done a little bit more natural, not quite so um, fixed. 
which is a style that we see t um, in, in the market today. But with so much going on, we can easily see that it starts to get a little bit um, hard to really tell much about the design. So you might want to limit some of what you're putting on there or make sure that it is in the exact spot, but you don't want to cover up all of your color. So make sure that you pay attention to what you're going to put in there, how you're going to let that sit, and also those fine points where we've added in some extension here. As we see it start to fall away from the container, you're going to want to make sure you're shooting from end to end so that it's well lit. Because we have this sheltering going on here with the foliage, it might make this area a bit darker in here. So I'm going to ask one of the, um, the assistants that's working here to sort of raise this light that's right here to my right up so that we can see how just readjusting the lighting. There you go. Now see how the interior of that design now starts to show up. So you may want to just be directional in your lighting as you start to take those photographs because it really will make a difference in the end result. And then when you're shooting things that are tall, you've got some, uh, some additional things that you're going to have to be concerned about. We love the height here because it makes it look like it's a perceived value. It's this much money, this is how much this costs, but we have a lot of negative space going on. And that doesn't always shoot really well, especially when we're going to put our darker colors down at the base like this because it can make things very heavy. Remember, green is black to the eye and sometimes to the camera. Then we've got this bright, vibrant, hot pink that's stacked right here on top. And then we start to get lighter up here. So it's going to be very bottom heavy in a design like this. Same thing for here because we're shooting against black and white. Green, again, is black to the eye and sometimes to the camera. So we've purposely used this variegated foliage to help illuminate that and bring some more of those colors out against the white. And instead of like a pure white, we're using that creamy tones because a cream color against the white is going to show up a lot more than a true pure white against the green. Remember when you're starting to mix colors, that green and white are natural combinations that work really well together because we see green in nature almost everywhere. So it just seems to really fit. And it does give it that contrast like you would see with the black and white. So it looks very natural. It looks like it belongs together. And sometimes it can help pull that white out a little bit. Be cautious with things that are very narrow like this because it can almost look like a hair on the final photograph when you take it. And make sure that you look for things like a sweep. A sweep is that white background like you see in the photograph that is going to make sure that all of your color comes away from that clean background. We call it a sweep because it sweeps all the way down and curves so that there is no hard edge at the back where you might have one piece of white paper against another piece. And then you're gonna have that line that goes along the back that sort of cuts things out. So look for um, things that you can utilize in your shop, that you can pick up easily like a photo cube. And then you might be able to use that sweep as it comes down with just some can lights that you can get at almost any hardware store or invest in a couple of really good LED lights that will let you control it. The better prepared you are and the better photographs that you present, the more attention you're gonna grab on social. Next time, we're gonna talk about video because video is gonna grab their attention quickly. And remember, you've only got a little bit of time to pick up that attention and keep it focused on you. We hope that these tips will help you make better photographs for posting and for merchandising, and especially for marketing, because the better photographs that we do, the better marketing we do, the larger profit margin that we're gonna see. So join us again next time for Design Time. If you enjoyed that video and you'd like to see more, click the subscribe button.